Hi everyone, my name is Fred and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how to construct an ellipse using three different methods. The first one is going to be the auxiliary circle method, which is also known as the concentric circle method. The second method will be the rectangular method and the third one will be the intersecting arc method, also known as the focus method. So this video is going to be in three parts. The, the first part will deal with the auxiliary circle method, okay? Then part two of this video will deal with the rectangular method and the part three will deal with the focal uh, uh, point method or the intersecting arc method. All right, guys, so an ellipse has two major diameters, the longest diameter and the shortest diameter. Now, the longest diameter is called the major axis, while the minor diameter is called the minor, or rather, the shortest diameter is called the minor axis. Now, you will be given these two axes, all right, these two major and minor axes. Now, take for example, all right, so in this case, the major diameter is given to be 140 mm, that is 14 centimeter, while the shortest diameter is given as 70 mm, that is seven centimeter. Now remember I told you the longest uh, diameter is also called the major axis, while the shortest is the what, uh, the minor axis. So if you are given the longest diameter or the, the, the major axis to be uh, 140 mm, that means you are going to stretch 70 mm because uh, if the diameter of a circle is 140, then the radius would be 70. This is an example, all right? So you stretch 70 because by the time you draw a circle with a radius 70, the diameter automatically will be what? Of 140 mm. So with that, you describe a circle representing the major axis like this. All right? So now with the other... Using the same center of the circle, do not forget, you measure 35 because the minor axis is given to be what? 70. So to draw a circle with radius or with diameter of 70 mm, you need to stretch 35. So there we have it, that's 35. Then you use same center, okay, and you draw the minor or the smaller circle representing the minor what? The minor axis. So after doing that, you connect the diameters. So you draw a line from one end of the circumference through the center here. All right. So you, you draw the diameter. All right. So what we are going to do now is we are going to divide the circle into twelve equal parts. Twelve equal parts. So how do you do that? Now you can choose to use I, uh, either the radius of the smaller circle or the radius of what the bigger circle whichever one you choose to use uh, it's okay but before then we have to divide the circle into four equal parts now we have divided it into two equal parts so you divide the circle into four equal parts now what you do here you drop a perpendicular at the center here using your what your set square so with this You drop a perpendicular to the center, and there we have it. Then you extend. All right. So there we have it. Now, what do you do next? You use the radius. Remember, we drew the circle. Okay, you use the radius of this bigger circle. All right. You divide the circle into 12 equal parts. How? With this radius, just a needle at this point, okay? Cut the circumference at that point. Cut here. Needle here. Using same radius, cut at that point. Cut the circumference here. Then you needle here. Using same radius, make an arc there and finally you needle here cut the top all right so there we have it so what do you do next you connect opposite what points all right remember 
these are thin lines. Everything you see here, they are all thin lines. So you connect opposite point through the center. It must go through the center. All right? Through the center. Okay, so there you have it. Now, after joining opposite points on the circle, you will discover that the circle has been divided into 12 equal parts. So what you do next is you number. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to 12 for the bigger circle. Then for the small circle, this is 1 prime, 2 prime. No, this is 1, so this is 1 prime, 2, 2 prime, 3 prime, and so on to 12 prime. All right. Okay, so what you do next is you connect points, okay, using thin lines, okay. For example, uh, 8 and 10, okay, 11 and 7, 12 and 6 is already connected, 1 and 5, 12 and 4, okay. So to connect 8 and 10, okay, so you connect this point 10 and uh, 8, all right. But do not complete, uh, the, the, do not draw the complete line. Do you understand? So just stop somewhere there. Stop somewhere here. All right? So you connect 11 and 7. Like this. Stop somewhere there. Stop somewhere there. From here upward. All right? So 1 and um, 5. Stop somewhere there. And you connect two and four. Stop there. Stop there. So what you do next is, that is for the bigger circle, all right? So we're going to repeat same thing uh, for the smaller circle, but in the opposite direction, all right? So in this case now, you're going to connect point five and point seven, four and eight, nine is already connected, two and 10, 1 prime, 11 prime. So, but this time around, you're not going to draw it inside the circle. You draw it out to intersect with these lines you've already drawn. All right? So you connect 5 and 7. All right? So this is 5 and this is 7. So you draw the line out. You discover that it will intersect with this one you've already drawn. You draw it out. You see they have intersected. So this is the point of for the ellipse, this is a point also. So you connect four and eight. Four and eight, you draw it out. So you draw four out to intersect this line and you draw eight out to intersect this line. So you discover there's a point of intersection here and there's a point of intersection here. So you continue for 12, 10, you draw them out, and 11 and 1, you draw them out. All right, so there you have it. So you have all of these points here, all right, by drawing lines out using your ruler, all right? Then you locate the other points. 9 is going to be a point. 3 is going to be another point. 6 is going to be a point. 12 is going to be another point, okay? So with your French curve or flexible curve, you connect the ellipse. Okay, so there you have your ellipse. Remember, this is the auxiliary circle method, right? Now, to learn how to connect um, the, the, the locus, the points on an ellipse, all right, there's a video I did on how to make use of your French curve or a broomstick, a flexible broomstick. To connect what ellipses you can um, go back to the video that explained how to use a French curve and a flexible broomstick to connect what points in an ellipse all right so this is the auxiliary circle method